Welcome to Snake Speaks. We're a blog and a vlog. I mean, it's somewhere in the middle. Today I am talking another book review. This time I'll be discussing The Man, Not Your Average Average Girl by Rebecca Quinn, a.k.a. Becky Lynch from the World Wrestling Entertainment, uh, former women's champion, tag team champion, the works, one of the top stars in professional wrestling. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, my thoughts initially coming out of the book, it's good. It's a good read, especially if uh, if you're a Becky Lynch fan, who I think the her autobiography is uh, going to be geared towards. Um, it has a lot of insight, especially about her early years um, before she even joined uh, WWE and how she got into wrestling. Um, so that was a that was some good pulling back at the curtain to find out how she actually got to where you know she she made it before she made it big on, on the main stage. There were some good nuggets there. Um, for me, I actually knew a lot of her history prior to reading this, so um, a lot of it didn't come as a surprise. Uh, one thing that did surprise me was, um, spoiler alert for those of you listening, um, her relationship with Fergal Devitt, who is Finn Balor in uh, World Wrestling Entertainment. I did not know those two were together um, when they were younger, so that was that was a surprise. Um, other than that, I knew a lot of her history already, but it was interesting to read it. Uh, in her own words, so uh, apparently Becky wrote the book herself, or she at least had a, a big hand in it, which is good and bad because, um, you know, you see it through her eyes, but also if you're not familiar with the way that she talks, it can be a little bit confusing that the way that it's laid out in the book, um, a lot of her Irish humor gets lost if you don't. Uh, if you don't hear her voice in your head while you're reading it. So anybody who's not that familiar with her cadence and um, style of speaking might find it a little bit confusing. And to be honest, a lot of that falls on the editor to go through and, and clean up the sentence structure so that it makes more sense. Also, I'd venture to say the uh, the editor missed a lot of spelling and punctuation which is unacceptable for a book of this magnitude um yeah that, that's that's one of the big flaws that I, I i do have to point out just because of the magnitude of who who it is and you know who it was published through and so forth um so there was there was a lot of uh, mistakes that were in my opinion unacceptable for a book at of this juncture but that being said um the rest of it, you know, she skips a lot of things that I would venture to say that would, would have been interesting to hear about. She kind of glosses over a lot of her early years in NXT and, you know, putting matches together. This is the t type of stuff that I wanted to read when I was going through it. Um, I've read autobiographies before, uh, Medusa's bi biography and uh, Ronda Rousey's. And in theirs, they go a lot into, like, putting matches together and, and whatnot. Becky kind of glosses over it. I don't know if she's trying to protect the business or whatever, but uh, she she sort of jumps past it uh, and and delves more into her like personal relationship with the Seth Rollins, um, Col Colby Lopez, uh, which is fine, uh, just not exactly what I wanted to read about. Um, so that was another another not so great thing that I found in the book. Um, the other thing it was it went back and forth between her being very self-deprecating and also then sounding like an, an egomaniac in some uh, parts, like very egotistical where some of them I'm just going to point out so, um, at the end of the TLC ladder match between Becky, Charlotte, and Asuka, where Asuka wins the match, she writes in the book, uh, I don't know if the crowd was cheering for Asuka or if they were cheering for me because they knew I was going to finally get Ronda Rousey. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right here and now, they were cheering for Asuka. So um, that I was a little put off by that. Um, let's give Asuka her flowers. It was not about you. Uh, that happened a couple more times where, you know, she sounded... Uh, I'm just going to say, she sounded like an asshole, to be honest with you. She sounded like it was, it was all about her and she didn't want to give any um, credence to anybody else. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, on the flip side of it, she was like 
really self-deprecating when she didn't need to be. So it was kind of weird. I don't know if she was like in a different headspace when she was telling different parts of the story, but it, it just came out, it just came out uh, flip-flopping a little bit. Other than that, um, it was a good read. Like I said, I knew a lot of the story going in. The only thing is, is when you write an autobiography this early in your career, uh, there's a lot that came after that. So she she lives off in a very bizarre spot. Um, she kind of glosses over a lot of stuff that happened after she came back from her pregnancy. Um, that would have been interesting to, to hear about because uh, that was the whole big time Bex and when she was a, a, a heel and and then she rolled into being tag team champions with uh, WWE Hall of Famer Lita and stuff like that. And I just found it to be like, she kind of glossed over it. I don't know if she's planning on doing a second one where she talks about um, the rest of her career. More than likely, that's something that'll happen down the line. But um, maybe not the best place to end off. Maybe it should have just ended, you know, when she went, went to have her baby. Should have just ended it there. But it's not my book. It's not my story to tell. It was hers. Um, she did a good job. I still don't know if she actually wrote it herself. Um, but, I mean, who am I to say? It, it did come across that maybe she did. Like I said, it was clunky. Um, so, I mean... Uh, editing could have taken care of that so that's that's my only note on it uh, other than you know uh kind of skipping around a lot and like very short chapters that could have been flushed out more it, it seemed a little rushed in places um so i'd be interested in, to see what a follow-up book would look like where she maybe had more time uh it's my understanding that when she wrote this first one, that she scrapped it and went back and like rewrote big chunks of it. So I don't know if that played a hand in the way that it turned out. But um, yeah, it just seemed it seemed a little rushed in places where she could have maybe flushed it out a little bit more. But and again, you know, the editor could have come in and said that. I think maybe the problem was is that they gave her an editor who knew nothing about pro wrestling. So whereas. Uh, Deborah Maselli, a Medusa, her her co-author was somebody who knows about pro wrestling. So he was able to take her words and make it more, you know, uh, more for the pro wrestling fan. I don't know if Rebecca Quinn was trying to cater to all audiences, which in my opinion is a mistake. You definitely have to niche down with a book like this. But if you're a Becky fan or if you're just interested in her story because you've heard of uh, who she is, uh, definitely pick it up. It's worth the read. Uh, I recommend it. Um, if nothing else, you can read about how someone uh, pulls themselves out of a dark place because when she quit wrestling for a time being, she was flip-flopping all over the place. And she, it was, again, a lot of um, self-deprecating kind of stuff where she was... Uh, she had no confidence that was, that's what I'm getting at and so it's interesting to find out you know to read about how she overcame that and how it also like I said kept it lingered with her for a lot of her career so uh it's uh the man not your average average girl which <laughs> I'm sorry that's a bad t- that's a that's not a good title <laughs> but uh it is what it is um congratulations to her for finishing the book that's a big deal um So go ahead and pick it up. Give it a read. Let me know what you think. Till the next time.